Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Whipple, the Alaska Division of Agriculture. Welcome to another Facebook Live. Today, we are talking about specialty crop block grants for 2022. The application period for that is coming up this March. And so I wanted to bring on Catherine Cheadle, who is our grants administrator, to explain what that program is, how to apply for it, and kind of cover some of the details. So Catherine, tell us all about it. All right. Well, thank you, John. It's great to be back here on Facebook Live. Hi, everybody. We're very excited to be rolling out another year of the Alaska Specialty Crop Lot Grants. Now, these are grants to enhance the competitiveness of Alaskan specialty crops. Uh, it's federally USDA funded, and every year Alaska gets a little bit of support to share with producers and researchers and just uh, get some really neat projects on the ground. So uh, I'm excited to begin sharing this with you guys. March is going to be our application period this year. So without any more delay, I thought I'd just uh, jump in, give you guys a little bit more information on what the application is gonna look like this year, similar to past years. I think we've handled this since at least 2009. So hopefully some of you out there watching are familiar. Um, it's a competitive grant, so we will be taking an application. My overview today, uh, just a little more on specialty crops, a couple of neat changes and uh, just some logistics about the funding and the proposal. One of the new things this year is we're not going to do a two-tiered application. In the past, we've taken a letter of intent of a couple pages, sifted through those and then solicited a full application. This year, we're just going for it for the full application without the short letters of intent. Um, our timeline is March 1st through March 31st, 2022. And let's talk a little bit about specialty crops. These are defined by the USDA and you can see the link down below there, a list of eligible crops, um, fruits, vegetables, even uh, herbs for cooking, some medicinal plants, even nursery plants. We've had peonies in the past, honey, uh, birch syrup, there's a fantastic Alaskan crop for you. Not specialty crops though, uh, your main commodities, you know, things like corn, dairy, grain, larger livestock, hay, sorry, can't do that. Specialty crops is a specifically defined group of agricultural products. Now what's new this year, um, the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, um, has fine-tuned it to be a little bit more, um, a, just a little bit easier to report on, a little bit easier for the planning. Instead of eight outcomes listed in the application, we have seven of them. <laughs> Each one of those have different indicators that you can fill in. Just basically, what are your plans? What difference are you going to be making? Um, there are no match requirements. That's been in effect for a couple of years, but people still do often ask about that. This is a beautiful grant. It requires no cash or in-kind match on the part of the applicant at all. We, we don't need to hear about that at all. Um, there are some minor changes uh, within the narrative of the application and so on. Um, also, when the Division of Agriculture gets your grant, we approve it as a state, and then we have to forward it to our funders at the USDA, and they come back with lots of edits. So there's kind of a a little bit more process than just applying and getting a quick yes or no there. Indirect costs, no longer allowed. So folks familiar with the grant world, no direct costs are what you're gonna get on the ground and what it costs to do that. Indirect would be your overhead and we're not allowing that uh, since uh, several years ago, a couple of years now. Here's the timeline. We're going to open March 1st for these full applications and there will be a link on our grants webpage through the Division of Agriculture. Um, we're aiming to get that up on February 28th, so we'll have links to the full application and a couple more exciting resources coming your way. March 31st, full applications are due and we're taking those by email. We have a dedicated specialty crop email for that. All through April, we have a statewide review panel of agricultural experts. And I can share more on that. Somewhere around the end of April, we'll make our final decisions within Alaska and May 3rd, my work is due to our funders by collecting all of the Alaskan approved projects and submitting what's known as our state plan altogether to the USDA. And they take the summer to review that. They do come back with edits, usually not major things, just questions or refining some budgets and so on. Um, 
but they, they do need to approve our state's recommendations because they are the funder. And sometime in the fall, funds will be awarded and the final announcements will be made. So if you are applying during March 2022, you could expect your project to begin potentially by early October 2022. They can be one year, two years. Um, some projects may even run into three years. So um, again, these are kind of longer grants, a little bit more involved. So USDA to this program with the State of Alaska Division of Agriculture, to you. Who are you? Um, past recipients and a lot of current interest has come from producers, universities, cooperative extension, soil and water conservation, um, schools, businesses, nonprofits, producers. Um, what we love to see are partnerships or just especially whatever entity is in the lead. It's not one business out for just the um, profit of that business. It's gotta be a project that floats all boats as it were. So you could do programs to increase different varieties of crops, um, promote consumption by the public, better access to specialty crops, research programs, what grows well in Alaska, what grows well in your climate, what varieties of things, crop safety, um, pests, viability, sustainability, livelihoods in local communities. So marketing, research, production, all these things can fit under the umbrella of specialty crops. You know, and again, if you have questions, I have contact info coming at the end. We have so much creativity. We've even got kelp projects in mariculture that do qualify for specialty crops. So Alaska, as always, is the unique one. Um, and again, all projects have to be wider in scope than just your one operation or organization and just aim to improve and benefit all of Alaska agriculture as a whole. So benefit that you can, you can share the value of. Um, priorities, again, focused on crops or regions that maybe have not been previously funded. Um, if you have been, you can certainly apply again, but would you take into account, you know, in all fairness, trying to share um, food safety, innovative production, uh, research, innovative projects, market feasibility studies, um, you know, enhancing different networks of reaching consumers, crop efficiencies and optimization, and again, benefiting all of Alaskan agriculture. So in the full application, like any application that's got sections, this is pretty standard boilerplate um, grant application sort of organizing here. We need to know what it is, where it is, how long it'll take you, what you aim to do, how you aim to measure your outcomes and what those benefits will be. You know, a, a succinct and understandable project purpose. And again, the successful projects once they've completed their whole cycle and our final, we do put those online and they're available, the final reports are. So it's really neat to be able to share and show off a lot of Alaskan agriculture. So the more succinctly and clearly you can write what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and what the purpose and benefit is, the neater it is for anybody um, in the, the agricultural worlds to see what you're doing. And of course, a budget, work plan, sensible timeline, these applications aren't terribly long. Um, the format is about 15 pages. We certainly don't need to see a lot more than that. Here's a look at the application budget, standard line items. So we are held to these. Um, again, nothing unusual. It's pretty similar to what last year's was. The outcome measures coming from USDA, they're evaluating on a little bit differently. Um, so instead of enhanced, a lot of their language here says increased consumption and consumer purchasing abilities, increased access. If you're thinking about expanding production and distribution networks, increased food safety knowledge and processes, disease control processes, uh, different varieties of seeds or of crops, expanding research and development, environmental sustainability, so from this, you'll have a drop-down list within the full application, and each one of these have what they call indicators within them, where you can give some number values to what you hope to achieve. So it's pretty boilerplate, but that's the language that they'd like to see, so we can we can measure what happens. Um, a final performance report. Okay, so there are annual reports if you have a two, three-year project. The final report just needs to give the basics of you know what happened and what impact was made. 
how many beneficiaries, how are your outcomes compared to what you planned, you know, compared to what you said you'd do. I personally, I love the challenges and the lessons learned. And there's a whole section for that is challenges and developments, not problems, challenges. Um, a, a great number of grants the last two years had to extend, extend or they, or had, they to had to change how they were doing things, say, instead of an in-person workshop to go online and use some virtual platforms. So maybe COVID was a huge challenge. And this is the way that different organizations got around that to meet their goals for different trainings or trials that they were involved in. Um, and of course, any final report has, what was your budget plan? What were your expenses? Hopefully those are very close, if not right on. Um, additional information. So it's, it's all fairly straightforward with this grant, but there is a process to it. And I'm absolutely available to, to answer questions and help out. The scoring is the same as in previous years. We've got a 100 point system. Um, and it, it is weighted on the kind of support, the kind of thought that's gone into your outcomes and your impact. Does the budget look coherent? Um, how practical is it going to be? And I guess with that, you know, we're just ready to roll this out next week. Um, I'm always available for questions. That phone number is a message line. My phone's been a little funny, but I will get your message. I will get it quickly. That email is a dedicated specialty crop block grant email. And um, that is also how you're going to apply. That middle one is the Division of Agriculture's grants page. So we have announcements about the specialty crop block grants, um, a program called the micro grants that you may have heard of. All that information about how to apply for that and the workings of that are, are on there. And again, starting next week, February 28th, we're going to have some links on that Ag Grants page for you, for um, especially Crop Block Grant. John's gonna help me make a video going through the full application of how to apply, kind of a little walkthrough, so that's familiar. We're also gonna have a really cool link up there. That bottom one is past projects. That's a question I get sometimes as well. As we're developing our application, what's already been funded? Let's take a look at examples. What would a successful project look like? And you can go online at that link, which we will have up next week, and uh, see what, I think it's over 30 of them are up there for past specialty crop block programs. So John, are we getting any questions out there in Facebook land? Uh, we have not received any questions uh, regarding specialty crops. And I can check, keep checking through the chat here to see if anything's coming through. And uh, none as of yet. But before we sign off, since we are talking about grants, I figured we might as well uh, also shout out micro grants uh, for yep. folks who are interested in that or might be interested in that. Uh, mm -hmm. they are, this is directed towards individuals and towards organizations, typically nonprofit organizations, uh, but also some native corporations, uh, townships, things of that nature. If you're interested in micro grants, the application period is right now, February 14th through March 30th. And you can uh, apply via the website on, on the screen. And if you have any questions, shoot us an email at dnr.ag.grants. And we'd love to help you out. But yeah, just wanted to give that a shout out and a reminder that that's happening right now. Hey, and a little tiny detail I want to point out just world coincidence, the micro grants are due on March 30th. And that is an online portal. We're using a system called Smart Simple, where you have a password, you log in, you fill in your information online by March 30th. I'm gonna go back an image here, the specialty crop block grants. Those are being taken in by email. We are old school. Micro grants fields potentially thousands of applications. Online was the only same way to do that. Especially crop block grants are, are a little more substantial grant and we're, we're only expecting maybe 20 of those to come in. I don't know, between 10 and 30 full applications wouldn't surprise me. So we're still taking those by email and that's an attachment as a Word document or if you choose to do a PDF. Last thing on that one is uh, March 31st is actually the deadline for the specialty crop grants. That was a typo that I made earlier today. <laughs> You have till the 31st on specialty, but March 30th is it for the micro grants if you are interested in that different program. And that's for smaller projects of various kinds. Go online and check it out. 
It's an excellent program. And we're very excited that this year, the micro grants are much simpler. We're doing something called fixed amount award. Um, and it's, it's nicely defined and the process is much simpler. So we're very excited for both these programs. John? Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on to tell us uh, all about both of those programs, Catherine. And I look forward to getting uh, folks' responses to that. Thank you for everybody that watched us today and that's going to be watching this in the days to come. And we look forward to uh, helping you out. All right. Until next week, see you guys later.